Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to our second class from Learn Arabic from the Quran. And in this class, we are going to cover um, parts of speech and definite nouns from lesson two. And we will also get into uh, lesson three if we have some time. Let's begin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So in English, we have eight parts of speech. Now, these parts of speech we are not going to cover um, today because there are lessons to cover each one of them in detail. What we want to focus on today is in Arabic. There are only three parts of speech. They are noun, ismun, verb, fa'lun, and particle, harfun. So a particle is neither a noun or a verb. For example, bismillahi, bi is a preposition. It means in, okay? And it falls in the category of particle. In as in inshallah means if, and it's a particle, and it falls in this category right here of harfun. So a particle is used with a verb or noun, to give it meaning by itself does not convey complete meaning. Okay, you have to use it either with a verb or a noun to give it meaning. So we're gonna review this same information in different chart format, just to make sure that you're very clear on these terminology. So ismun is a noun, fi'alun is a verb and harfun is particle. So the Arabic ismun is going to include several categories in English of nouns, pronouns, adjectives, and adverbs. And the fa'al is more equivalent to the English verbs. So baitun means a house, and it falls in the category of ismun. Zahaba is a verb. It means to go, went, and verbs will be covered in our future lessons. Uh, but just to know the terminology right now, it is a fail. And ila means to, it's a preposition, and it falls in the category of harf. Again, the same information showing you in a different chart format. You are not expected to know these Arabic terms right now for pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, interjections, because we will be having future lessons on these. Okay, so for now, you just focus on these three high level categories for the parts of speech. Uh, preposition and conjunctions will be in future lessons, but for now, um, it's good, good to know this uh, wa, uh, because it shows up in the Quran a lot. Uh, it means and, and it's a conjunction, and it's an example of a particle. Again, chart to show you the same information again, that we've already talked about. Okay, so now let's talk about indefinite nouns. We talked about definite nouns in our last class. And right now we are going to talk about indefinite nouns. Now, indefinite nouns do not point to anything particular. So in Arabic, they are called, the Arabic term for that is nakiratun. And the definite nouns are called ma'arifatun. Again, this terminology is gonna to come to you slowly. Um, don't worry about knowing all the terminology right now. For now, you need to more focus on understanding the differentiation between indefinite and definite nouns. So in English, how do you indicate indefinite? You indicate indefinite with either a, a or an an, right? that shows you that it's an indefinite. For example, if I say a book, I'm referring to any book, not specific. I can say an iron, I'm not referring to any specific iron, it's any iron, okay? So that is the indefinite article in English. In Arabic, there is no such separate word for this indefinite article. In Arabic, it's the tanween 
that indicates to whether it is an a uh or an an. So in other words, it's sort of hidden in the tanween. So in Arabic, if I say kitabun, it indicates a book. So you have to understand by that tanween over here that this is referring to a book. Kursiyun is referring to a chair. If you compare that with the definite article, you will see a clear difference because the definite has this al attached to the noun to make it definite. So compare kitabun with al kitabu, the book. Compare kursiyun, a chair, with al kursiyu, the chair. Okay, so this is definite. This is indefinite. This is specific, specific book, specific chair, and this is not specific. A book, a chair. So remember one thing, al and tanween do not coexist. They cannot, they don't go together. You cannot be both definite and indefinite at the same time. So al kitabun is incorrect. So you, you, if you want to add an al, it has to, the tanween has to go. It is going to be al kitabu. If you want to be indefinite, no al kitabun. Now, here's an exception, which is the proper names, for example, masculine names, Khalidun, Muhammadun. Yes, they end with tanween, but in this case, this tanween is not indicating to indefiniteness because these are names and names are always definite. When you are talking about Muhammad or Khalid or someone specific by nature, it is definite. By nature, Muhammad is definite because if you're talking about Muhammadun, you're talking about Khalidun, they are specific. So by nature, they are definite. These names are definite. So this is what this is saying here. Names are definite by nature. Muhammadun is definite. So do, do not put an al in front of it. So it is wrong to say al Muhammadu. So this is the exception for the rule of the tanween that we looked at earlier. Names are always definite. All right. So once again, um, the, the Arabic terms for indefinite is nakiratun and the definite term is ma'arifatun. So there are no definite or indefinite articles in Arabic like uh and the, uh, we already talked about this. Instead, indefiniteness is indicated by a tanween, which is also called a nunation at the end, because remember tanween is a sign of a noon with a sakin at the end of the noun. That's what it means by nunation. So which means the vowel sign is doubled at the end. So you see, qalamun, there is actually, this tanween is indicating to two dhammas at the end. Two dhammas at the end. Kitabun, there's two dhammas at the end here. Definite, al-qalamu, the pen. Al-kitabu, the book. Okay. So is an ismun noun cannot at the same time be definite and indefinite. Therefore, we already talked about this. You cannot put al-qalamun. We've already discussed this. And here are some more names which are definite. We've already discussed this also. But here there are more names shown to you as examples. So here we Notice how kitabun, a book, becomes definite by adding the al to it. You add the al and drop the tanween and just keep the dhamma. Kalamun is a pen. You add the definite article, al, and it becomes al kalamu. You lose the tanween. Okay. So al kitabu. Is definite. It's a particular book. Al Kalamu, the pen, is a particular pen. So the asal or the origin of a noun is that it carries two dhammas, like we have been looking at. Okay. 
And again, the tanween is a sign of showing indefiniteness. Nakiraton. And we talked about the exception with the Arabic male names. Muhammadun and Abbasun are examples of definite names. They are ma'rifatun, definite, ma'rifatun. So um, now baitun, like we discussed, is a house. And we will study adjectives later, but this is just a note here to show that if it's maftuhun is an adjective, it means open. So obviously you're not going to say a open, um, you know, and maksurun means broken. So even though it has a tanween, you're not going to say a broken, it's just wrong English. So that just means it's broken, but it has a tanween on it. So here's an example of a verse that you can review again on your own to make sure you can point out the indefinite words that we have discussed. So for example, do you have a house of gold? A house of gold. See by tun, a house of gold. This is also indefinite. Please notice indefinite. Over here, there are two dhammas, right? This is tanween, by tun. But this is also indefinite. It doesn't have to be two dhammas. It, it, it is, this is also tanween. It's two kasras. Zuhrufin, gold. See, here you have two kasras. This is also a tanween kasra. Zuhrufin. So this is indefinite. This is indefinite. Kitaban. This is an example of also a tanween with double fatha. Kitaban, double fatha over here. So this is also a tanween and it's showing indefinite until you bring us a book, kitaban, a book. It's indefinite, right? So, um, and then, so this is just a uh, request from the disbelievers. This is what this verse is uh, talking about. And, and at the end, um, Allah is saying to say, uh, was I ever but a human messenger? He is telling our Prophet um, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over here. See, Basharan is indefinite. A Basharan, human, Rasulan, messenger. So these are both indefinite words. So you can go over this on your own again, uh, just to make sure you understand this concept. So to recap, to summarize, we, today we discussed uh, definite nouns and um, indefinite nouns, and definite nouns are, call, are, are, are called al ma'arifa. So it indicates to a particular thing or a specific person, and we discussed there are two kinds. We discussed the names are always um, definite. Name of place, object, it could be definite. Um, and uh, in this case, you don't need the al. And again, even names of countries are definite. By the same token, how Khaled is definite, a name of a country is obviously, it's a specific, so it is definite. Here, you don't need to worry about having uh, an al here because it's already definite. So Misr is Egypt, so it's obviously a definite noun, even though it doesn't have the al in front of it. Here is another verse that you can review on your own. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not but a messenger. So this is a messenger, right? Right here, indefinite. Other messengers have passed on before. Now it's talking about specific other prophets, other messengers have come before him. See how this is definite because it has this all in front of it are uh, here. It is a rusulu versus here rasulun. So I hope you see the difference between indefinite usage and definite usage. All right, so we are going to uh, wrap up this lesson uh, on definite nouns, but I want you to just uh, you know start to get familiar with some terminology. Uh, you do, do not have to know all these terms today at all. Um, in this lesson, you are not expected to know these terms. Uh, this is just to get you started, just to get you started to hearing some of these terms, right? 
So the, there are some nouns, different categories, like in nouns, we, we are going to study masculine nouns and feminine nouns. In Arabic, the masculine term is muzakkarun, uh, the feminine is muannasun. So example of a masculine is talibun, and which means a student. Talibatun is a female student. Arabic also has concepts as we will learn in the future. Singular, dual, plurals. Singular, mufradun, musanna is dual and jama. Jamarun is plural. Please do not worry about these terms. Um, there are many future lessons coming to discuss all this. We are just trying to get you familiar to hearing some of these um, concepts. So Talibun is a singular student, one student. Taliban means there are two students and Tullab means multiple plural students. And uh, another concept that we will study in Arabic is Aqilun is something that has intellects. For example, humans, angels, jinns, we all have intellects. So we are called Aqilun versus Ghayru Aqilun, which is like things, objects, which have no intellect. For example, Baitun is non-intellect. It's a house, okay? This is what we talked about today. This was our lesson today. So it's good if you know, if you can know these terms, nakiratun uh, and ma'arifatun. If you, if you don't remember, it is quite okay to not remember the Arabic terms. All you need to do today is just recognize indefinite from definite. Okay, that's all that is the expectation from today is to understand that talibun is a student and at Talibu is the student. That's all the expectation from, for today. So we are going to now switch to uh, a book uh, that covers examples from the Quran related to the topics that we have um, covered today. So I'm going to take you right. I'm going to stop sharing this screen and take you to that book so we can look at some examples. Okay. All right, so there you go. This is the book. Um, and we are just going to go over, uh, like I said, some examples from the Quran covering the topic of uh, definiteness. And the beauty of this book is um, not necessarily to go over the grammar because we are going to be doing that from the slides, but the purpose of this book will be more that we cover vocabulary from the Quran so if you learn vocabulary, you're learning vocabulary from the Quran and also your examples that we cover related to the lesson will be from the Quran, inshallah, okay? So, and when, whenever you come across vocabulary uh, re related to our subject, it's advisable that you go ahead and um, learn that, okay? So for example, kitabun is a book um, I'll, and you can skip the verbs. Um, you don't have to memorize the verbs right now because we have not covered the verbs. So again, we already discussed all this in our lesson today. And here's a nice chart of vocab that I would suggest that you learn uh, because you know these words are very commonly used in the Quran and it's very nice to um, start to learn some vocab as we move forward. Uh, for example, you know, Laylatun is night. Some of this you probably already know. Shamsun is sun. Right, so you already know Qiyamatun, Jannatun, you already know some of these, but it's just good to expand on the vocabulary, like Baladun, City, Tairun is bird. So I would suggest that you kind of review these words um, and try to learn as much as possible on your own here. Najmun is a star. So again, verbs, just casually look at the verbs. Um, you are not expected to learn them at all right now. You can just skip through the discussions on the verbs right now. So particle also we will be studying in the future. Uh, these are just some examples of particle. Min means from, an means from, about. We have lessons to cover um, these words in the future. So this was the main lesson for, for today, which is 
indefinite nouns and nakira and al ma'arifa is definite. Okay, and again, indefinite nouns end with nunation, which is the tanwin. So look here, all of these words are indefinite. All of these words here are indefinite. And how do you know that? Because look, they all end with this tanwin, rajulun, imra'atun, samakun, ma'un, mulkun, all of them, adabun, right? Uh, samaun, ardun, suratun, jabalun, they all have that tanwin at the end. So again, names are also definite. For example, if you see in the Quran names, there are definite like Nuhun, Hamidun. And as we will cover later, some names are not going to have that new nation, but they are still definite. Ahmadu Ibrahimu, because these are foreign names and we will cover about these at a later time, but they are definite. Again, uh, just kind of uh, recapping the characteristics of a noun. So when you see Un, the new nation, Tanween, and remember, Tanween doesn't have to be just the two dhammas that we're looking at. It can have the double fatha, it can have the double kasra. They are all nouns. Okay. Right here is some examples that we have already covered today. So um, of these words, and they're all indefinite nouns. And here is how you can convert the indefinite noun to a definite noun by adding the al, right? So al bintu, bintun is girl, and you add the al, and it becomes al bintu. Nabaun, news, and you add the al, it becomes an nabau. So fakihatun is our fruit, and if you add the al, it becomes al fakihatu. So al maliku, right? This is fiddatun, which is silver. It becomes al fiddatu and al yaumu. Okay, so please go over these and make sure you understand how to convert indefinite to definite nouns. Okay, so that's all that we covered today. This is moving on into a different topic. So um, now we still have a little bit time left. So I'm going to start on uh, a little bit of the uh, third lesson. And we will just cover a few slides from there. Okay, I need to stop um, this share and share the other screen here. Just give me a moment here while I open um, the second lesson here, the third lesson, I mean. There we go. Um, you should be able to see my screen now. Okay, so like I said, um, we are going to cover a little bit of um, the third lesson in our second class today, which is nominal sentences and case endings. Okay. So in Arabic, um, nouns can have different endings. Okay. They can have different endings which show the function in a sentence, okay? Now, you are not going to be expected to know the functions of the sentence at this stage because we will slowly be learning them. For example, uh, you know, the function of a sentence can be that it is the subject of a sentence, it could be the object, uh, it could be, um, you know, other um, states. We are not going to worry about too much about that today. What we are going to try to focus on is to understand that the endings of, this, of the word will indicate to you the state, the state of the noun, okay? So for example, um, if a noun ends with a dhamma, 
this is Dhamma, or with the Tanwin Dhamma right here, in all of these examples, they are ending with a Dhamma, okay? This state, when it ends like that, is going to be called Marfu'un, okay? And if the state, if the word, I'm sorry, if the word ends with a Fatha, or with a double Fatha, like that, Tanwin double Fatha, we say the state is mansubun. Mansubun. If the word ends with a kasra or a tanween kasra, al kitabi, kitabin, Muhammadin, al babi, babin, all of these examples are in a state of majrurun. Majrurun. So we are going to talk a lot about this, these states in the next couple of slides. So if you don't understand anything right now, it's okay. We will look at more examples. So again, we are talking about three states, okay? So nouns have different endings to show the function in a sentence. These are called cases, okay? So if there is a dhamma at the end, Tanwin Dhamma, Kitabu, Kitabun, Muhammadun, Babun. We say that the it is in it is in Marfu'un. The state is Marfu'un. It is in a nominative state. For example, usually it's the subject of the sentence. So if it has a fatha or a double fatha, Kitaba, Kitaban, Muhammadan, we say the state is Mansubun, accusative. So usually it's the object of a verb. We will learn about this uh, slowly during the course of our lesson. The third state is with a kasra or a tanween kasra. And this state is called majrurun genitive state. And there are certain reasons why they are in that state. This is what we will learn slowly, okay? So I'm going to show you some examples uh, right now. For example, this sentence is saying, Zahaba Muhammadun ila suki. Zahaba is a verb which you don't know. Uh, we haven't studied verbs. It means he went. So who went? Muhammadun went. So Muhammadun is the subject of this sentence. He went. Ila is means to. The suk means market. So Muhammadun is the subject of the sentence. So that's the reason why it has that double dhamma on it, okay? So again, you are not to worry about the fact that Muhammadun is the subject right now. For now, you just worry about understanding that Muhammadun is said to be marfu'un. It indicates the nominative case. That's what you're focusing on right now, that it is marfu'un, it indicates nominative case. This example is also showing you the same thing. So Hamidun is student, Talabun means student, Mujtahidun means hardworking. So Hamidun is a hardworking student. Here you're also focusing on the fact that this is Marfu'un, okay? Indicating by, indicated by the Tanween Dhammas. Versus here, what you're focusing on right now is that Muhammadan is done here. Here it was done, here it is done, right? So this state, because it has the double double fatha on the top, the tanween on the top, we are saying this state is mansubun, mansubun, okay? So um, this means ra'aitu, it means I saw, ra'aitu is a verb that you don't know yet, it means I saw, I saw who? I saw Muhammadan. So Muhammadan is the object here, Again, please do not worry about that if you do not follow that. All you're trying to observe here that Muhammadan is in this mansub state because it has the double um, fatha on the top of it. Okay, and uh, same goes here. Come dula run in daka. It means how many, how much dollars do you have? So again, notice the double fatha, the double 
Fatatan, which means the double uh, fatah on the top of it, the Tanwin fatah, indicating to the state of Mansub. And the third example is here we saw Muhammadan, here it is Muhammadin. And why it's Muhammadin? Because there is a, a word that came before it. Allah came before it, and Allah is a preposition. So you don't have to worry about the why part right now. Again, just focus on the fact that something made it come down to this state, which is the state of majrurun with this double kasra on the bottom. Again, examples has a kitabu Muhammadin. So this is what you need to focus on at this time is the, the tanween kasra. The watch is on the table. The watch is on the bed, couch. Asariri, bed or couch, right? So you're just worry, uh, just focusing on this kasra right here, which indicates to majrurun or genitive case. So this is saying something similar. So when the noun ends with a dhamma, it this is uh, it is called rough. It's the the state is marfu, so it's the same thing. It's really see, it's the same letters in it. So I don't want you to be confused by this terminology. So it's just saying the same thing that when it ends with a dhamma, it, it is it is called a rough. The state is marfu. Again, nasp. It's the same thing. When it ends with a fatha, when it ends with a fatha, you say it's a nasbu and the state is mansubun. And then when the last letter takes a kasra, it is, it is al jar. And again, the state is what you have to focus on, majrurun. Okay, so don't be confused by these terms. Uh, you just have to worry about knowing. Marfu'un, Mansubun, Majrurun. Okay. All right. So here is an example of that, which is um, so Muslimun is Marfu'un, Musliman is Mansubun, and Muslimin is Majrurun. So I would advise you to try and do all of these. So I'll do a um, couple more with you. So Sadiqun is marfu'un, if it's sadiqan, it is mansubun, if it is sadiqin, it is majrurun, alimun, marfu'un, aliman, mansubun, and if it's alimin, it is majrurun. So I, you notice there's a little alif here. So don't worry about this alif. It is just a spelling rule. For now, just focus on the how it ends over here and how the states are changing. Okay, so mu'minun, mu'minan, and mu'minin. All right. So inshallah, you can practice these ones on your own. And... Um, from next time, we will cover um, the nominal sentences. So we will end the class here right now. So jazakallahu khairan for attending. And assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.